the season of discovery will throw basically everything we know about the vanilla meta out of the window. The combination of new abilities, new gear, and a restrictive level cap are going to make for tons of emergent gameplay, theory crafting, and opportunities to experience the game we all know so well in a brand new light. But where there is change and choice, eventually we all know that the best options will be figured out, and that certain specs will rise to the top until their level cap changes again, even more rooms are added, and we get to do this all over again. Season of Discovery is going to be something special on release, though I really do believe that. But now I've gone over every single class and known rune in videos so far, I want to do a bit of a recap. Which classes do I think will perform the best in Phase 1, and which ones need a few more levels before they start to really pick up in performance. Because whilst runes will certainly change your class a lot, being level 25 is also kind of a big deal. And for some classes, you're missing tons of your core talents or abilities. And this is something which will heavily influence how I consider each class as a whole. And of course, we still don't have all the information as to what Blizzard are planning. Even during phase one of the game, it is a season about discovery. Who knows how many secrets will be waiting for us. Nevertheless, maybe you are on the fence as to what to play, or you just want to compare what you think will be the top performer and why. Final thing to mention is I'll be putting classes in order from bottom to top and we'll cover the classes from a viewpoint of how they will do overall, whether you want to PvP or PvE more this season. So, with all that said, let's make a start. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor, Dragonair Silent Gods. Dragonair Silent Gods is an open-world strategy game available on PC, the Epic Games Store, Mac, iOS, Android, and Steam which has seen over 10 million downloads worldwide since its global launch, securing at the top spot in more than 10 regions. You can click the link in the description box to download the game and join D&D Legends in Dragonair today. Dungeons & Dragons itself is the world's most popular tabletop role-playing game, and the first phase of Dragonair's collaboration with Dungeons & Dragons was officially launched. Dragonair Silent Gods combines the decision-making and team-building of role-playing games with the unpredictability and chance of tabletop games, and is inspired by both Western themes as well as Dungeons & Dragons itself. For those who enjoy D&D, they will also find familiarity in Dragonair Silent Gods through the unique character creation system, tactical battles, moment-to-moment -moment decision making, and of course the unknowable outcome when it comes to rolling the dice. Recently, Dragonair Silent Gods has teamed up with D&D 2, and will introduce iconic Dungeons & Dragons characters Driz Doerden and Ertu into the game on November 17th, as well as offering other iconic D&D characters through future seasonal content releases. On top of that, during this collaboration, Driz and his Black Panther Gwen Huivar will also have their own storyline to play through fully. You can check out Dragonair Silent Gods and their D&D collab today by clicking the link in the description to download the game for free. Many thanks to Dragonair Silent Gods for the sponsor today, let's get back to WoW. The unenviable, yet also inevitable last place has to go to Warrior. I mean, come on, you're a warrior at level 25, what did you expect here? Out of every class, Warrior is missing a staggering amount of their toolkit in this early stage of Season of Discovery, and that's going to really impact them. You don't even have Berserker Stance by level 25, you learn that at 30. So amongst other things, you're missing Whirlwind, Berserker Rage, Pummel, Intercept, and so many more key abilities. You also won't have enough talent points to spec either into Sweeping Strikes in the Arms Tree or Death Wish in Fury. So it's going to be that early game warrior experience where you're charging in, pressing Sunder Armor, and just kind of hoping Wind Fury procs. And that's before we even get to Rage Generation at low levels. Vanilla Warriors are infamous for their slow start to the game, and being capped at 25 most definitely does not do them any favours here either. And to be honest, if Warriors were even moderately good at 25, I would be terrified of how they will look at 60. We all know that this class scales into the late game better than anyone else does, and I'm not expecting that to change. All this being said though, even though a lot of the warrior runes are very powerful and add a lot of flat percentage damage, 
it's going to take some time before they start appearing on your damage meters. On the PvP side of things, I think it's a similar story. You're just missing too many important parts of your toolkit, which make you really start to deal damage. Sure, you can charge in from combat now and that removes roots with Warbringer, but when you close the gap, you're going to do what exactly? Hamstring and then hope that overpower procs? I will say, however, that I think protection looks good, even at 25. Unlike the Warrior DPS specs, they do have a lot of their abilities available early, and the new runes make Protection Warrior smoother to play, and frankly able to deal some damage too. I mean, when Sunder's at 5 stacks, Devastator's going to be doing 150% weapon damage, and that is spammable. So get a nice slow weapon, a Feral Wind Fury on it, and they should be doing quite well. Warriors will start to see improvements as early as level 40 I think, but in this bracket starting at 25, I think they're going to experience that typical warrior slow start, and their best spec will be protection. Next is another class which you typically find at the top of class lists in vanilla, the Rogue. Let's start with PvE, we have the Rogue Tank which is now a thing. But at level 25, those mitigation stats just aren't going to be where they need to be. And when hits do inevitably land on you, you have no bonus armor stat at all. So you're going to be a really unpredictable tank to heal. On top of that, what happens to a rogue tank when they take a stun? Sure, they get uncrittable through a rune, but it's just a rogue getting hit by mobs? That doesn't seem very good. And there are a lot of stuns in vanilla too. It seems strange this whole rogue tanking thing. Part of tanking is being able to take a hit and having some idea how much damage you will be receiving. With rogue it's either I take no damage or I take all the damage and there is no in between. Rogue also has a complete lack of any AoE whatsoever and a loser's combo points when tabbing so threat management on multiple mobs is going to be poor. But on the DPS side of things, poisons also need more charges in my opinion but the assassination build seems solid at this early stage, and it will probably be the thing to play if you are a rogue enjoyer, because combat is just missing a lot of buttons. Talents such as sword spec, weapon expertise, blade flurry and adrenaline rush will all not be available at 25, and combat really needs them to start picking up. Going daggers down a backstab build has a few more decent talents higher up the tree, but compared to other classes it's just minus 20 energy on backstab, which I don't think is going to be quite keeping pace with some other classes at level 25. For PvP, you're playing Rogue without Cheap Shot, Kidney Shot, or Blind. I don't know if I need to really add anything else to that statement, but you better be able to find a build that one-shots people, or you're going to turn around and get one-shot. Now, I'm pretty confident in putting Rogue and Warrior where they are, but after that, things start getting a bit more complicated. Next up, I've decided to put Priest, but honestly, the next three classes are all super close together for me. I think Priest's healing identity has just straight up been improved, and that very much goes for PvE and PvP. In PvP, Disc has Barrier, Penance, Death, and Strength of Soul to choose from, which are all such good options. They also will have a Dispel at 25, and Priests will have learned both of their racial abilities. In PvE, there's nothing to complain about with Priests either. You are missing a bit of your kit, such as Prayer of Healing and Greater Heal, but I'm expecting Priests to still be steady performers as usual. The problems early on are going to be with Shadow. At 25, it's just not going to be great, and there are two reasons why. First is between Shadow Weaving, Darkness, and Shadow Form, you're missing a potential 40% bonus Shadow Damage. That's a big number. The second problem is mana. Nothing has been shown so far to alleviate the problems Shadow Priests have in spending their mana bar within the space of a minute. On the PvP side of things, some kind of Shadow build will be decent in 1v1s, but Priests always are good at doing that kind of thing. And at 40 and beyond, Shadow will see a very noticeable jump in power, and hopefully some kind of mana related spell. But at 25, it might feel like a bit of a waiting room for the Shadow Priest enjoyers. If you're a healer who wants to PvE or PvP though, you're gonna have a good time. Next I put Druid, a class that has received a ton of highly impactful abilities. In fact, I wish I could put them higher, but the classes towards the top are ones which I'm pretty sure are all going to be able to do some pretty overpowered stuff, whereas Druid just seems more fair and reasonable. Wild Strikes giving Wind Fury to Feral makes this spec suddenly really highly prized in raiding and at 25 they will be the only source of wind fury for both factions, so you're going to want lots of feral druids. 
Feral can now become crit immune, takes way less damage, has way better single target threat. The only problem is still AoE threat, but Spare Droids were already great in vanilla. They're going to be amazing in Season of Discovery. Balance can now cast Wrath for free, has Star Surge, and just some much needed variety to their playstyle. Hopefully they should see a bit more relevance on the damage meters. No Moonkin form at level 25 though, obviously. And Restoration has received a bunch more healing spells, and hopefully they can lean into that heal over time identity a bit more than just being stuck casting healing touch. There is nothing that's really a problem for Druids which I foresee, but I just don't think they're going to be able to do anything which feels really overpowered at this early bracket. On the PvP side of things, it's going to be a similar story to how Druids have always played, with a very hit and run playstyle. Of course you won't have travel form at level 25, but between damage over time and heal over time effects, you should still be able to gradually wear people down. Number 5 for me is the Shaman, and I'm going to say straight away if this were the 40 bracket, they would be in the top 3 easily. But we are to the 40 bracket, and man our Shaman just missing so much from their toolkit at 25. You don't have your Wind Totem at all, meaning no Wind Fury Totem, in fact no Wind Fury Weapon imbue either. No Chain Heal, no Chain Lightning, aside from Warrior I think this class loses out the most from being this low of a level. However, this has been counterbalanced somewhat by the fact Shaman have got some absolutely busted runes such as Lava Burst and Overload. These will be good at the start of the season and will only get better. As of doing the video, it appears as though Dual Wield Enhance will be the go-to initially. And as much as I love to see two-handed work one day, Dual Wield specs tend to just do good damage in vanilla. Restoration looks fine, it does need Chain Heal though to be able to take off as a powerful raid-wide healer. Elemental is the spec to watch though. At 25, it will just be okay, and it's missing so many talents which will make it power spike super hard at level 40. But I guarantee crit on Lava Burst is always going to be very big. In PvP, Shaman will also feel a bit slow to play. No Wind Totem means no grounding, which is a big part of your defensive toolkit, but if you consider the back and cast spells, Shamans just tend to do pretty well. I think the tank spec for the Shaman looks quite well rounded. It gets mana back when you block, you get this stacking armor buff, it has AoE threat, it has a taunt. It really has everything that you need to make a tank work, and I think it will be quite solid at this early level. So those three classes, Priest, Druid and Shaman, feel quite close together for me. When I think about it, I often want to change where I put them, but then I think of a reason not to. They all have at least one spec which will perform very well, but are generally just missing those few key talents or abilities to really start doing something overpowered. All of the classes that are left, however, I'm pretty sure are going to feel quite powerful even at level 25. Next, I have Mage, and I think there will be a good amount of experimentation with all three of their specs, as well as their new identity as a healer. And even though heals were nerfed quite heavily during the PTR, it's still going to scale like an absolute monster in AoE situations. And provided your tank isn't getting globals, they're just going to sit on good health all of the time. Counter to other healers too, arcane mages can keep building damage to improve their healing output, which is going to put them in this spot where they can be amazing on AoE, whilst also doing a great amount of healing. I'm not sure their single target heals will keep up quite as well given the current state of runes which we know, and it does feel as though some part of their kit is missing that will be needed for tank healing in vanilla. And to be honest, it tends to be the case where raid healing is quite low and tank healing is quite high, so we'll see what happens here. Arcane as a DPS build has potential if a fight will end before your mana bar is gone. Your raid is also sure to be running multiple druids due to them now bringing Wind Fury, but they won't have Innovate until level 40. Saying that early on as a mage, you do have Evocation and Arcane Surge, but no mana gem. Arcane as a DPS build might be more of an attractive option during phase 2 of the season though. Fire is not bad at 25 you know, you can talent into improved fireball and ignite on top of runes such as burnout and living flame and bomb, which should make you do some respectable damage if you're lucky enough to score a few crits, but fire really does need crit for it to start taking off. Also don't forget about rolling ignites in vanilla, and when it comes to that you're going to need a lot more than 15% bonus crit. Frost honestly looks kind of busted to me, and perhaps the only thing holding it back is that you can only get one point in shatter by level 25. 
but with things of frost, ice lance and icy veins, the mage should be in a good spot here in all areas of content. Also, Cold Snap, which you can get by level 25, says finishes the cooldown on all of your frost spells. And Icy Veins is a frost spell, so you're going to get two uses out of it. I'm also assuming things of frost can proc off slow immune targets, meaning you'll be able to Ice Lance in PvE, and it should be some good efficient damage, even if you are missing a ton of crit. In PvP, this class will be played on a Knife's Edge and will probably be the highest skill cap class at 25. You do get a good amount of tools early, including Polymorph, Frost Nova, Evocation, Counterspell, Blink, Decurse, and many more. Also, if Frostbite works the way it does in later expansions, it will prop things of Frost guaranteed, leading to Mages being a very mobile caster. The issue is this class is so squishy. If the Hunter gets a jump on you, you're just dead in two globals. You do have Mana Barrier, which only stops physical damage in vanilla by the way, Frost and Fire Ward, as well as Frost Armor, but that's it. No Ice Barrier, no Ice Block, and the Mage's health pool is infamously low early game. Overall though, I think the Mage is going to be a great pick at level 25. On to the top three, the first is Paladin. Simply put, all three specs can get to a point where they're strong at 25 through talents, and they gain a lot of their utility early on, and many of their new runes are extremely strong. Early game Paladins will get Purify, which is Cleanse minus the Magic Dispel part, Blessing of Freedom, Blessing of Protection, a 4 second Hammer of Justice, Lay on Hands, and Divine Protection. Divine Protection just being bubble, but it doesn't last as long. Reps can talent down to Seal of Command and Pursuit of Justice for some much needed damage and movement speed. And they also get new buttons to press, such as Crusader Strike, Divine Storm, and even Exorcism will work on any target. They may not do so well in long encounters, as typically Rets have struggled with the whole mana bar issue, but while they're active and pressing their buttons, they're going to be showing on your damage meters. And in PvP, a 4 second stun from Hammer of Justice may be long enough for a Retribution Paladin to delete the majority of your health bar, especially when you throw on the few Seal of Command procs in there. Protection Paladins have enough points to get Consecration from the Holy Tree, which you're going to have to do. And to be fair, after that, you don't really have many points left, but the runes will fill the gaps in your kit very nicely. Also, I'm just saying a ton of this lower level content is going to be AoE pull focused in PvE since it's dungeon content that's been upscaled to raids. Sure, your Protection Paladin won't be able to compete on single target threat with a Druid or a Warrior, but on AoE, nobody even comes close to what they can do. I think Protection Paladin's toolkit will fit very nicely for what we will need for the majority of PvE content in Season of Discovery. I think it's going to feel like the difference between doing a TBC Heroic with a prop pally versus not having a prop pally. And that, if you didn't play it, was night and day. Holy is perhaps on the weaker side compared to Ret and Prot. They did get some super powerful runes and Beacon kind of just doubles their healing output. But the potential issues lie in the fact that you don't have enough talents to get Illumination at 25. And even if you did, you don't have much spell crit anyway. All the same, Holy can still be a very high utility pick whilst also bringing some good heals, so I don't think you're ever going to have a problem seeing a Holy Paladin in your group. Overall, Paladin is just a very well-rounded class at this early stage, and it has a lot going for it in both PvP and PvE. Because of this, I rate them really highly. Next is Hunter. So Hunter as a class has always done very well at the lower level brackets. Now I will say as of the most recent PTR build, the rune combo that I was thinking was going to make Hunters super overpowered, has been toned down. Lone Wolf has gone from a 25% bonus damage to 15%, and Sniper training from 30% bonus crit to 10. I guess welcome to a version of the game where things are actively balanced. Not something we're all too used to in Classic. Nevertheless, I still think Hunter is an absolute powerhouse pick for the 25 bracket, despite the oncoming nerfs. This is just how good this class is at a low level. Beast Mastery should also be playable at 25 if you do want to play it. Pets at low levels relative to the Hunter are still very strong, and whilst Hunters will be more of a single target focus class, they should be able to put up some very good numbers. Also, don't forget you can spec into aim shot by level 25. I'm not entirely sure how tanks are going to be holding threat when you have so much crit, but friendly reminder to all Hunters in vanilla, this engage does exist and it reduces your threat by a flat amount. And since you don't have Fain Death yet, you should get used to using that button. For PvP, if a hunter gets an opener on a fight, 
they're pretty much going to win it. And Ashenvale has a whole lot of places off to the side where you can hide. I've mentioned it before, but Night Elf Hunters being able to shadow meld and then pop out and do an aim shot into a Chimera shot or whatever it may be, is going to be something that's really hard to do anything about. As for the melee hunter with Wind Fury, it might actually be okay, but I feel as though it needs better stat scaling though. For example, both rogues and hunters gain one melee attack power per point of agility, but rogues need a bit under half as much agility per point of crit gained. Hunters' agility scaling is pretty much all tied into the fact they gain two points of ranged attack power per one agility. This is looking kind of long term though. Maybe hunters just need some better strength scaling to make up for it. And I'm sure the other melee won't mind them rolling on their gear anyway, right? Another big issue with the melee hunter at the moment is that they don't have a good way to actually get on their target. In Legion, when this spec was first introduced, they had an ability called Harpoon, which is basically death grip, but reverse. The hunter pulls themselves to the target. So in PvP, I guess you're just going to be concussive shotting and then trying to run people down with Cheetah. I don't know, sounds kind of goofy to me. Either way, I think overall Hunter is looking in an excellent spot for both PvE and PvP in this early part of Season of Discovery, and I think they're going to be a top performer. Which means I think the class that will do overall best from the 25 bracket, as far as we know at the moment, will be the Warlock. Okay, totally no bias here, I swear. I don't even want to say I think the class I main will be the best, because it's another way of saying I think they are the most likely to be nerfed. I will say, however, perhaps the biggest weakness they have are on abilities. Some of the ranks of damage over time effects they have won't be doing a huge amount of damage. What the runes warlocks have alongside their talent choices will make for a ton of experimentation. You can go down the destruction tree as fire and see how that does. You can spec into affliction, get one point in nightfall, put corruption on everything, and hope for procs so you can just spam Shadow Bolt Volley. Or you can go for the newer playstyle and be a tank instead. The first tanking spec ever in World of Warcraft that will be fully ranged by the way. You can also have an instant corruption and you'll have instant searing pain too. And this class stands to gain a whole lot more power as the season progresses too, where you can mix and match more talent choices. I don't think it's strictly always going to be the best on single target or AoE, but there are so many options on what you can do with the Warlock, even at level 25, that I think it is one to watch out for. And I'm not as sold on the whole Affliction build for PvE if I'm honest, however, I do think it will be the strongest leveling build in the game, outside of Mage's ability to AoE farm of course, and leveling is a pretty big bit of vanilla so that is not too bad either. And then we get on to PvP and there is just no way Warlock is not overpowered here. A damage over time drain life, a rune to activate that increases your armor by 500% as well as an instant searing pain, and what else do they get? Voidwalker sack, healthstone, fear. Yeah, this class is going to be absolutely busted. It won't be as great in larger scale PvP to be fair, but locks will be an absolute nuisance to deal with if you can't dispatch them quickly. There is just nothing not to like here, and I believe Warlock has multiple viable specs to try out across different runes and talents. And for that reason, I've put them at the number one spot. And those are my thoughts for the classes in phase one of Season of Discovery, pre-release. Again, we're going into this with incomplete information. Things are absolutely going to change, and I'm very much expecting the unexpected too. With so many people trying out various different builds and specs, it's pretty much guaranteed that some kind of combination of items or talents arises that turns out to just be turbo broken. But that's going to be the fun part of the season, isn't it? What do you think for the classes I have covered here, though? Are any of them going to do way better than I've estimated? Or do you largely agree with what I've said? Let me know below. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening in. And I'll see you all in the next one very soon.